Hey there, engineers. Today, we are building for the future. And you are going to be able to identify some of the hazards resulting from earthquakes. And you're also going to describe ways that engineers have devised to help reduce the impact of hazards from earthquakes. So just think back to what you know an earthquake is. And an earthquake is a natural process caused by the movement of parts of Earth's surface. And remember, there are hazards that are caused by earthquakes. You might want to look back at some of our previous lessons or previously in your textbook, and you can recall that strong earthquakes can raise and lower the land and change the course of rivers. They can damage buildings and other structures, roads could buckle, railroad tracks can twist, and bridges may collapse. Water pipes and electric power lines break, all because of earthquakes. So today, we're going to just start by looking at this image right in front of us. And this image is a building that was destroyed by an earthquake in Japan. Remember, damage to structures is one of the hazards resulting from earthquakes. This case study, this Think Like an Engineer case study that we're going to do, will focus on how engineers are trying to solve the problem of damage to structures resulting from earthquakes. We're going to jump into the reading, and our purpose for reading is to identify the problem engineers seek to solve as it relates to earthquakes and the solutions they have devised to solve this problem. So, building for the future, our problem is how can engineers make buildings more earthquake resistant? In March 2011, a powerful earthquake just off the coast of Japan shook the ground and set off an enormous tsunami. The earthquake and the tsunami damaged more than 1 million buildings and killed or injured thousands of people. Yet, most buildings survived the earthquake and many lives were saved. Why was the damage in Japan less than might have been expected? Because earthquakes are common in Japan, the government requires all new buildings to be designed to withstand earthquakes. The recent disaster has inspired an engineer named Masaki Saruta and his team to develop structures that are even more resilient. The engineers know they cannot prevent earthquakes, but they can develop solutions that will lessen the impact of these disasters. So, in Japan, the government requires that all new buildings be built with earthquake resistance built into it so that these buildings do not get destroyed as new buildings get built because Japan is on the ring of fire where all, there's a lot of tectonic activity. So we know what the problem is. The problem is engineers are asking how can we make buildings more earthquake resistant and Masaki Saruta works at the Shimizu Corporation in Tokyo, Japan. He is the group leader of the Vibration Control Engineering Group. Saruta and his team of engineers design buildings to withstand the destructive forces of earthquakes. So that's what his group is doing. What is their solution? Well, their solution is over the years, engineers at the Shimizu have developed a variety of earthquake resistant designs. In some of the designs, buildings are separated from their foundations by a system of pads or bearings. This is called base isolation, and it separates the frame of a building from the violent shaking of an earthquake. Okay, so we can see that here. This building is suspended or hangs over a strong concrete core. So we have suspended isolation. Base isolation. 
Masaki and his team invented a new kind of base isolation called the Core Suspended Isolation System, or CIS. In, C, or in CSI, the core of a building is a large pillar of reinforced concrete. The floors of the building hang up from the top of the core. The core is isolated from the rest of the building by large rubber bearings. When an earthquake strikes, the core absorbs the vibrations. The core may sway, but the floors of the building do not sway. Instead, they remain upright. So they have this, the suspension hangs over the strong core, and then they have these bearings that go on the bottom and the top. If the core shakes during an earthquake, layers of rubber bearings prevent much of the motion from being transferred to the building. This reduces damage. The team also designed a building that partially floats on water. The building stands on rubber bearings and its foundation rests on a pool of water. To resist their, to test their design, they built a large model of the building. Their tests showed that water reduces the movement of a building. But the real test came during the March 2011 earthquake when the engineers found that the features of their building cut the effects of shaking by more than half. Masaki says he wants to come up with technologies that save people's lives. His team's engineering solutions are helping to accomplish this goal. Okay, so let's recap what we just read. Why are engineers trying to help make buildings more earthquake resistant? They know they can't stop earthquakes, but they can apply scientific principles to help reduce the effects of earthquakes. So why are they trying to build them? They're trying to build them to save people's lives. So what government policies helped reduce damage and save lives after the March 2011 earthquake? Well, in Japan, the government requires all new buildings to be designed and built to withstand earthquakes. And as we previously discussed, this is really important because of Japan's location on Earth. Earthquakes are very common in Japan. Why might the structures in this photograph, why might they have reacted differently to earthquake waves? Well, some of the buildings like this one were probably built before the government required those earthquake resistant standards, which is why this one is so damaged when there are other, when there are other buildings like this one that are still in perfect condition because of the new technology. So what is base isolation? So base isolation is a method of separating buildings from their foundations by a system of pads or bearings. And how does base isolation help lessen the impact of an earthquake? Earthquake waves shake only the foundation of the building, not the frame. So in this case, we have the center pillar right here, and that is the base where the rest of the building is not connected to the ground. So when the ground starts to shake, the rest of the building does not shake. This pillar shakes and these lines coming off of it, all these wires, they help to keep it stable and balance back and forth as the shaking occurs. So what is Masaki's new kind of base isolation called? It is the core suspended isolation or CSI. And how does this system differ from the traditional base isolation system? Well, instead of isolating the foundation from the frame, the CSI system isolates the core of the building from the floors that are suspended from the core. Now, as you go through this lesson, you're going to find that there's lots of different ways that engineers are trying to solve this problem of making earthquake resistant buildings. And this is just one of many different plans, many different engineering solutions to reduce the impacts of earthquakes. 
And if we look even deeper here, we can see that like we have we have these cables running all over this building and they're hanging on the outside of the building. The cables on the outside of the building are going to help to support the building as it moves in an earthquake. Um, we can see that they form an X pattern or they have multiple triangles in them. And as you know, a triangle is geometrically a very important and very strong shape. And then when we get into our deeper image, we can see that this, this diagram is showing that if the core shakes during an earthquake, layers of rubber bearings prevent much of the motion from being transferred to the building. So when this part shakes, these rubber dampers, they lessen the vibration that's going into the building and they absorb some of that vibration to help reduce the impact of the earthquake. Now, these, these dampers, these uh, rubber bearings, they're located at the top of the building, at the top of the core of the building. And we know from the text that when this happens, when this happened, and even when they put the, the model on water, their tests showed that water reduces the movement of a building. And in March 2011, when the engineers found that the features of the building cut the effects of shaking by more than half, so there was half as, half as much damage done to the building as there was in any other system it gives the engineers proof that this could be a viable option to reduce the impact of earthquakes on buildings. As you move forward, engineers, you're going to be asked to, to replicate either this um, design principle that you see in front of you, or you're going to be asked to come up with your own design that you think could lessen the effects of of earthquakes on building structures. And again, in the additional information, there's a lot of other solutions that engineers are coming up with to lessen the effects of, um, of earthquakes on building design. And then you're going to be asked to relate to how our base isolation and core suspended isolation systems related. How is isolating the base and isolating the core, how are those things similar? How are they related? And what is the whole goal of everything here? Well, the whole goal of everything, like Masaki says, is he wants to come up with technologies that will save people's lives. So your goal today, scientists is, or scientists and engineers, is that you are going to identify some of the hazards resulting from earthquakes, and you are going to describe two ways or more that engineers have devised to help reduce the impact of hazards from earthquakes. Enjoy this one, engineers. Mm -hmm.